So, uh, you, you know, I used the term Paskey earlier, you just mentioned it as well. And for some people who may have heard of Paskey before in the context of, say, FIDO, and they've heard of FIDO, and if you know it's been going on for a while, you may wonder, well, are they the same? Are they different? A Paskey is, is a FIDO credential. So if you've been using, you know, uh, and it's based on the same protocols as with the security keys, um, it's just, it, it's mostly an improvement in the user experience more than anything else. Um, and so in addition to, to enabling this, this uh, passwordless flow, um, there's a number of other uh, benefits that have come from the, the shift to passkey. Um, one, of them, one of them is the ability to synchronize passwords. Um, and again, people with um, using things like LastPass are going to scratch their head and say, well, I've had that for a while. Um, but uh, this mechanism hasn't really existed before. And in the password, the, sorry, the FIDO space, um, one of the usability challenges we had was if if I had an iPad and I created a an account um, even using Fido with my bank and then I wanted to log in on my iPhone I'd have to create another passkey or another Fido credential on that iPhone mm -hmm. and so it didn't leverage the moving across and then there is the cha extra challenge of what if I only have an iPhone and then I lose the iPhone what happens to all those credentials I created? So part of this evolution towards uh, passkey is in addition to the passwordless as aspect, there's the um, recovery and synchronization capabilities. So within a particular platform, say the, the Apple ecosystem, uh, if I create a passkey on my iPhone, it automatically becomes available on my iPad. Yep. So that I no longer, and again, very similar to the right. experience you get with a password manager today. So people are you know, familiar with LastPass, and by the way, I'm a LastPass user, um, that th to some extent, these, these experiences will, will not be new, but to the majority of people out there who, who still haven't taken that step, um, this is going to be a much better improvement in usability. And then the other is the backup recovery capability. If I have a yeah. single device and I lose it, um, because these have been protected by the, the platform, um, in the case of Apple, it uses their iCloud keychain. Um, I can then recover it to my device, going through a very rigorous um, proofing process to prove that I really am who I am. Uh, so it's it's a trusted process to bring it back. Android, Chrome, they've got the same thing in place now, and and the Windows platform, uh, Microsoft system is is uh, supposed to have that available this year. So mm -hmm. that's it, it's really the big shift is in the usability of this underlying cryptography mechanism that, that I've been talking about. So it's the same protocols that are already in place. Anyone who's already using FIDO, it all continues to work. The, the new change though, is that if uh, it's been set up that way, it'll do passwordless and it'll start doing synchronization. So what this helps um, fix is the problem of deploying it to the masses. You know, again, the problem with the security key was a big barrier. The problem of backup restore was a challenge and, and these things. And this is where pass keys are really now going to open things up in a big way so that your average consumer, your average user can start using pass keys. And the beauty of it is that um, as it becomes more uh, common, they'll become more familiar with it and it'll just start getting used. They don't have to do anything extra. The websites will just automatically register them with a pass key. And so there, in some cases, eventually we'll get to the point where there isn't even a password to steal, that no password will ever be created for the account. Mm -hmm. It'll just use a, you know, a secure pass key and it'll basically be based on, again, on its uh, cryptographic capabilities.